Hey guys, this is Rudy coming at you live from Palm Beach in Florida. A couple of days ago, I made a video. I called it the uh, five top energy buys with a question mark. And uh, one of the stocks that I mentioned that was new to me was a stock by the name of Blackstone Minerals. I uh, offered to uh, do a little bit of a deeper dive on Blackstone Minerals and uh, maybe uh, decide whether this is something we might want to get into or not. And uh, what I'm going to try and do is give you as unbiased an overview as possible. Uh, I looked at some of the fundamentals. I looked at the stock and uh, tried to figure out uh, whether this is a buy right now or not. And um, maybe what you can do is uh, follow along and then uh, let me know what you think. Because at the end of the day, uh, what we want to do is, is make sure that we make the right decisions and uh, the communication that we have on this channel is part of the due diligence that we do when we decide whether to open a new position, or add to a position, or exit a position, right? So uh, let's help one another here. But I'm going to tell you what I know about Blackstone Minerals, and then you can tell me what you think. So the company, which is new to me, uh, oil, gas, consumable fuels, it's a small cap. It's worth, you know, $3 billion or so. Uh, what do they do? They own and manage oil and natural gas mineral interests in the United States. They're... Uh, Objective or their mission, if you'd like, is to maximize the value of their existing mineral and royalty assets and expanding their asset base through acquisitions. So it kind of gives you an indication of where they're at. They own and manage oil and natural gas mineral interest. It's mostly U.S. domiciled. In fact, it's 100% U.S. domiciled, and it wants to expand its base through more acquisitions. It owns mineral interest in approximately 16.8 million gross acres. That's quite a swath of land. And uh, it has mineral and royal royalty interests in approximately 41 states in the continental USA, including in all the onshore producing basins. Quick look here at the snapshot. I took this uh, picture earlier today, just before the close. Yesterday when I covered, or a couple of days ago when I covered Blackstone Minerals, it was trading at about... Um, 17 bucks 50 or there, more or less. And today it uh, dipped 2.6%. Uh, so now you have an entry point here at $16.78. I'm not sure what it closed at today, but anyway, it's about 16 bucks something. Uh, heavy day in terms of volume. I took this snapshot at uh, 3.21, so just 40 minutes before the market closed. Uh, I doubt whether it recovered a little bit. I, I didn't look. Uh, but anyway, your purchase price, if you want to enter into a new position, on the New York Stock Exchange, Blackstone Minerals, BSM, is trading at about $16, $17. It's a $3.5 million market cap company. The PE ratio is attractive at uh, below 10. It pays a very attractive dividend of uh, $1.80, which at the current stock price is yielding more than 10%. And on the 52-week uh, range, it's sitting just right of center in terms of that 52-week range. Uh, so sort of in the middle, kind of in the middle between the uh, sort of 10 and $20 range over the last year or so. It's been a solid performer for people who are long in Blackstone Minerals for the last year. I did not have a position. I do not have a position right now, but I might open a small position tomorrow. The ranks has uh, Blackstone Minerals outperformed 10 uh, all the uh, indicators on, on tip ranks are positive. You can see everything is green down here below. There's nothing really that jumps at me in terms of uh, Blackstone being out of the ordinary. So if we look a little bit deeper into the technical, so um, the first thing that popped out here was on uh, December 7th, right? So today is the 8th. So just a day ago, Blackstone hit a double, double top. And uh, what that means, firstly, you can see the double top here on the graph, the red lines, right? So... Um, what that means is they're saying, uh, the uh, technical guys, right? The, uh, the technical nerds uh, who know a lot more about this stuff than what I do, but what they're telling me is that the price seems to have reached the top. After failing to break through a resistance level and ultimately breaking downwards in a sign of reversal to a new downtrend, and then they expect this duration. I am not sure how they uh, calculate the event duration. I simply don't know if I did know. I will tell you, they said this bearish duration trend is approximately 35 days as it relates to this double top. But the other thing that happened from a technical point of view is uh, just a few days ago on December the 5th, that was Monday, today is uh, Thursday, 
the price across the uh, moving average, the 50-day average, so anyone can look that up. That's a bearish trend as well. So you can see the lines converging over here when uh, Blackstone dropped to below $18 per share. That um, is automatically a bearish trend. You don't have to be a technical analyst to know that um, when a stock dips below its 50-day moving average, that is probably a bearish trend. And most of the time, if you uh, guess that, you are probably guessing right. The event duration, though, one day. Uh, so once again, as I just said on the previous slide, I'm not sure how they calculate this, but uh, that's just because I don't know. I, I went into my international account to, uh, to find some information on Blackstone Minerals, even though it's a US company, because I wanted to get a uh, more broader look at the stock than what I typically get from US analysts. analysts. So um, we have six analysts that are covering Blackstone. Uh, this is on my global account, two buys, two outperform, two holes, no one's saying sell it. Uh, right at the bottom of the screen here, on the left-hand side, you can see that the um, earnings per share surprise is kind of like all over the map, right? So last quarter is 87.5, and then two quarters ago is 57, and three quarters ago is negative 118, and then four quarters ago positive 215, and five quarters ago negative 66. So uh, not a lot of predictability there, so I don't take too much value in terms of the um, mean or uh, actual earnings per share in terms of estimates and uh, looking at history, this thing is going to bounce around and be quite volatile. How about the competitors to Blackstone Minerals? Um, these are all familiar names to most of us. Look at this outperformance today by Rig. Uh, just yesterday or the day before, I covered a uh, Transocean in one of my videos. Uh, today, an outlier, up 5% while everything else just crashed, including right here at the bottom, Oxy, down 1%, energy transfer, 1.5%. Uh, Exxon was green today, Petrobras 2.3%, two, et cetera. The um, energy stocks are still getting crunched while the traders are doing what they do, which is trade. Um, we'll see how they go. We'll see if they're right or wrong. Uh, my uh, spidey senses say that um, this uh, sort of dislocation between the energy stock prices and the price of the commodity uh, is probably going to fall in favor of the stock prices because the price of the commodity has dropped way below where it should be. But that is simply because the traders are trading. Um, if we look at Blackstone's chart, and over here I'm looking at a one-year chart, and you can see the uh, sort of bearish signals that I mentioned just a minute ago sort of started appearing around about that uh, sort of November peak when Blackstone traded at about $20 per share. And uh, since then, all the oscillators have been predominantly negative, so bearish, 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 bearish. And you can see it started here sort of on November 16th, while the last bullish one was on November the 4th, right at the bottom. So since November, early November, when uh, Blackstone hit a high of almost 20 bucks a share, it has been predominantly bearish. Don't worry, I'm going to try and be as objective as I can. So I'll give you some more good news in just a second, but uh, this is where we're at. So if we look at the fundamentals of the company, here I'm looking at the income statement. Um, there's certain lines that are always um, good to look at just in general. You don't have to be a, a student of financial statements to uh, be able to observe that um, total revenue, as an example, from 2017 to 2018 jumped nicely from 429 million to 609, and then uh, took a dip back down into the 400s. And 2020, we can understand because of the pandemic, down to 342, and then just a slight uptick to 359 in 2021. And the reason why I say a slight uptick is because most of the um, EMP companies bounced significantly off that 2020 high. Uh, from a revenue point of view, Blackstone Minerals, um, arguably you could probably say they underperformed just a little bit. Very profitable though. So uh, the gross profit, if you look at the total revenue and you look at the gross profit number, this is huge, right? So even though it uh, experienced the same decline, which is kind of uh, stating the obvious, right? If your revenue drops from 487 down to 359, you can expect your um, gross profit to also take a bit of a dip. Uh, but look at the numbers here. You know, this is a company, as I just said, that's generating revenue. This was last year of around 359 million uh, with gross profit of almost 300 selling and uh, general administrative expenses, uh, 48, slight uptick there on the expense line, but um, very impressive numbers despite the uh, decline in, in uh, total revenue. How about the balance sheet? So um, cash rich, look at 2021, they uh, ended the year with um, 8.8 .8 
million in, in uh, terms of cash in the bank, which is considerably more than 2020, which makes sense. Uh, and certainly even higher than 2019, which was higher than 2018, 2017 as well. So cash, short-term investments, you guys know by now, I always look at the quick ratio and the current ratio. The current ratio tells me how many, uh, how much uh, cash and cash equivalents we have uh, when you compare it to current liabilities. And the quick ratio tells me how much cash I have compared to uh, current liabilities that are due within the next 30 days or so. I always look at those anyway. So along with the um, PE ratio, for example, I would always look at the uh, quick and current ratios anyway, just to sort of see where the current, uh, what the current situation of the company's cash flow is. Current liability is very little, uh, very low. Only 77 million is not a lot of money. Uh, the equity, the uh, sort of owner's equity, which would be you and I, if we purchased um, a share of the company, uh, fairly flatlined, but very, very positive, right? Because at the end of the day, your balance sheet consists of three main parts. Your assets on one side of the ledger have to equal your liabilities and owner's equity on the other side of the ledger. So if you take your assets and you deduct your liabilities, you left with the owner's equity and the uh, total equity here is very favorable for investors. Uh, something that you can look at, um, I know many of you have mentioned and uh, commented on insider trading before just to see if the insiders are buying or selling. The only valuable exercise that you can do there is to look at informative insiders only because the informative buyers um, exclude all the uh, stock transactions when, when uh, insiders are trading stock options, uh, even employee share purchase program, stocks, um, restricted share awards, performance share awards, and all those kinds of um, stock compensation type awards. Uh, an informative buy shows you whether uh, an insider is actually bullish or not. Now, if we look at Dawn over here, and I'm not going to even try and say her last name, but uh, Dawn is the vice president and chief accounting officer, or maybe chief administrative officer, I'm not sure. This is informative sell. So this, this tells us that either she needed some cash or otherwise she lost confidence because she actually exercised some stock and sold some stock to the value of about $100,000. It's not a lot of money. So it's not really material in the sense of one sale only. Uh, there is another informative sell at the bottom here. In fact, there are a couple. The president and chief financial officer, 489,000. Uh, but these go back nine months. So um, I'm going to ignore those for now and maybe look at the most recent transaction. So Dawn, who is the VP and CEO, sold out of $100,000 worth of stock. Uh, she might have just been taking profit. She might have needed money for a new house or a new car or something. We don't know. But look at this guy, Thomas L. Carter. He's the chief executive officer and chairman and director of the company. We have four informative buys here, uh, which is a very bullish signal. This is the guy who probably is most well-connected uh, obviously fairly wealthy because he can afford to, um, to drop literally millions of dollars on uh, the stock that he knows best and probably better than anyone else. But look at the numbers here, right? So there's almost a million, 400,000, 1.2 million, another 700,000. So there's about two, three, three and a bit million dollars in informative buys from Thomas L. Carter, the CEO, chairman and director of the company. That is an absolutely bullish buy. So um, the sales are bearish, the buyers are bullish, but the uh, only sell, recent sell was just $100,000 compared to this $3.3 million buy by Thomas L. Carter. What do the analysts, analysts say, right? Our friends who uh, do this for a living, Market Edge is suggesting you go long on Blackstone Minerals. Um, what's interesting here is that they upgraded uh, Blackstone uh, from neutral in September. And at the time they did the upgrade, uh, Blackstone was trading at $15.81. Now, what's interesting about that is that right now, uh, Blackstone is trading at just a dollar or so above that price. So uh, it'll be interesting to see where it goes from here on in. Um, but this is fairly new and recent because the date on here is yesterday, which is December the 7th, and they are still long. They've maintained the upgrade and we'll have to see where it goes. How about new constructs? Well, they have Blackstone as a strongly recommended buy and earns their very attractive rating. Investment rating details below. Very attractive rating means the stock has superior upside potential with low downside risk. And it ranks in the 95th percentile of 2,650, more than 2,650 stocks they cover. It is 19th 
out of their 150 energy sector stocks that they cover. So um, a very strong buy recommendation here from new constructs. And uh, this is new as well. This was as of December the 7th, uh, the street. So um, uh, don't confuse the street in terms of the analyst analysts with uh, your favorite TV host, Jim Cramer, uh, because the street actually does some uh, very good research. Um, certainly, like most other analysts, uh, they uh, might get it wrong from time to time, but they also get it right from time to time. They have a B rating on Blackstone Minerals. Uh, they remark that the annual dividend rate is, uh, in dollar terms, almost yielding 10%. They have it as a buy. Uh, this is uh, a little bit out of date because the, the um, buy rating dates back to September 6th. Um, but the uh, update here is the price as of December 1st, when it was 1845, and they haven't updated it since. If we look at the stock performance over the last three months, um, well, Blackstone Minerals was up about 20%. It's given back most of those gains now. So you're kind of back at the price where we were sort of uh, at the time when they were doing this um, analysis here. And so in September, they said the target price is $24.22. And now we're at like 16 bucks something. So um, if you get, uh, you know, if you enter a position here and open a new position at around $16 something and it goes to $24, you have 50% in addition to socking away that big dividend. One more, CFRA has Blackstone Minerals as a hold. Um, this is also fairly new. This is December 3rd, so there's no downgrade here. Uh, it's neutral for, for the most part, if you look at the quantitative model drivers. Uh, and there at the bottom, you can see that the um, if you look at the risk evaluation, the only one that's kind of like low is financial leverage because they have hardly any debt. And what debt they have is very easily managed um, because the number is relatively speaking so low in comparison to their um, operating interest and uh, and gross profits. So um, guys, that's uh, sort of the, uh, the snapshot overview uh, without going into detail on the uh, quarterly filings like the 8Ks and 10Qs and things like that. Um, you know, uh, if you ask me where I'm at right now, um, I, I'm, I'm sort of somewhat undecided, but leaning towards opening a new position in Blackstone Minerals. Uh, depending on where it goes tomorrow, I might just do that, um, you know, open a, a position. I, I never jump in boots and all. So if I do, I'd open a smallish position uh, and maybe start building a position over time. Uh, if I do open a new position in Blackstone Minerals and the stock uh, suddenly spikes and goes up, then I probably will just hold waiting for it to pull back a little bit more. And tomorrow, which is Friday, it's gonna be December, uh, what's the day tomorrow, the 9th. Um, if Blackstone pulls down some more and dips below $16 per share, uh, I would be very, very tempted to um, perhaps open a position in Blackstone Minerals starting as soon as tomorrow, which is December the 9th. So um, that's where I'm at. Uh, you know, I, I'm, uh, I'm say, I'm kind of suggesting that I'm somewhat undecided, but at the same time, uh, I am very uh, willing to, uh, I wouldn't say take a chance because uh, there's not a lot of risk here, um, except in terms of timing for the stock price per se. Uh, but this could be a, a very simple, easy foundational stock for me to hold, uh, where effectively um, the stock could decline another 10, 15, even 20%, and the uh, dividend more than compensates for that stock decline. So hey, that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, if you're interested in Blackstone Minerals, let me know uh, what you think or let me know why. Uh, if you're not interested, you also let me know why. And uh, let's help educate one another and see if we can uh, work to make some money. So, uh, guys, on uh, that note, this is uh, Rudy signing off from Florida saying thanks for watching. And um, we will be back soon with more and with other stuff. So take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.